Hello, Phil. Hello, Sandy. How are you? Fine. Fine. <laughs> Fine. Are you ever I have, alone, I, Bill? Am I ever what? Ever alone. All the time. Mm. What's that like? Um, most of the time that I feel alone, it's not like feeling anything. It feels like feeling nothing. I don't get lonely. I'm just not with anybody else. I think you do get lonely. I do? Hmm. You know this from personal experience? I perceived it from speaking to you. Yeah. I mean, I occasionally get lonely, but, but mostly it's, um, I know that I'm going to be with other people eventually. So I'm all right. I wonder what that must be like where, you know, often people at our age and stage can feel lonely, but in between knowing that they will be with other people at some point, but there are lots of people, especially older people, who don't have that. They're, yeah. they're lonely. Well, I, th this leads me to a quick two-part question for you. Number one is which, do you ever go eat or go see a movie or anything alone? Yes. If you see other people doing that, do you assume that they're there alone by choice or by by situation, by circumstance? Mm. Do you see an old person eating lunch alone? Do you assume, oh, they're lonely and they'd like some company? Or do you think, oh, they chose to be there alone? It, well, it, that's part of, I guess, a, a judgment systemization on my part, depending mm. on age. Yep. Uh, I make that judgment. And I do make that judgment. And I've always been somebody who looks at others I like to observe other people and see what they're doing and think about them and tell myself all kinds of stories about them. Older people eating alone, I find problematic in myself, you know, they might be perfectly happy. Right. It's your own fear coming to fruition in them or something, you know, some kind of. But it has changed over time. Okay. I saw a colleague today eating lunch alone at a table. And I, I was aware straight away there was a reaction in me, which was to, to rush over and to try and somehow, you know, smooth over this loneliness that this other person must be experiencing. And I didn't, I stopped myself because I thought, don't be so ridiculous. Don't presume. Maybe they're actually happy to be alone because they're dealing with kids all day or whatever. Well, indeed. And, you know, even if that's not the case, I wonder about these values that we put onto all these big feelings or big aspects of being human in that we see or perceive loneliness to be incredibly negative. But I wonder what loneliness is. What is it? Yeah, I, I, I think loneliness is another there's a sadness there, right? There's an implied sadness. You could be alone and not be lonely. Mm -hmm. What's really weird is that you could be with other people and be lonely. Well, we've talked about this many times before. Sure. But I'm, I'm curious about what is loneliness? It's not the state of being alone. No. It's the state of 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 being thinking that you're alone and you and 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 that state is not going to change. You know, like there's a certain desperation of loneliness, isn't there? I mean, I've called out my loneliness lots of times. Hmm. You know, I, I'm quite able to speak about loneliness, um, whether it means anything. Sometimes I'm not sure in that. 
I can say I'm lonely, but like you've described at the beginning, I also know that if if nothing else, at this point in my life, I'm lucky enough to have another person that depends on me, for example. So in the event of loneliness, I can seek solace in another. Mm -hmm. But loneliness is, is easy to... Loneliness is easy to distract with other people, but it's very difficult to resolve. Yeah. I mean, I think it's, loneliness I think it's just, it's a fundamental part of the human condition. Sorry. Mm hmm Anyway, what is loneliness? Something that's desperate, mm -hmm. not the state of being alone. Right. As you say, it's an ego reaction. It's a fearful reaction. Yeah, no one wants me. But again, these are, you know, the word and the thing, the kind of conflation of ideas here. We go very slowly and very carefully into it. loneliness. What is loneliness? I say with authority, I am lonely. But what do I mean? Well, you're self-defining that, right? I can't say that you're lonely. Only you can say that you're lonely. Oh, that person over there looks lonely. Yeah, but whether they are or not is... You know, it's that that's that's your external perception. That's your opinion, no, you know. No, no, but this is interesting. So is lonely a state of being or is lonely a part of memory? State of being, in my opinion. No wonder then does that part mean... of memory. Wait, where are you going with that? What do you mean? I I mean that as we talked before about, you know, things like we consider ideas to be creative and that creative is somehow a, a vitality, it's alive. Mm -hmm. Actually, ideas are dead. Aren't they? Ideas are dead. They're in the past. In the same yeah. way that everything we remember and our experience is, is not alive, it's in the past. So loneliness, I'm wondering if loneliness is just a dead thing that we cling to but this is where I find the interesting part for me is like I'm trying to move into that space of wondering if loneliness is something that is actually dead because it's an idea it's something my ego holds on to as a notion that, that is determined through some other aspect of being well then that would be true of all emotions right indeed but is loneliness an is loneliness an emotion? I think loneliness is a reason for emotion. Well, how what is but, loneliness then? It's a state of being alone and not wanting to be alone. Aloneness is indivisible, and loneliness is separation. That which is alone is pliable and so enduring. Only the alone can commune with that which is causeless, the immeasurable. To the alone, life is eternal. To the alone, there is no death. The alone can never cease to be. Yeah, loneliness does require other people to exist. It's a relationship thing, right? Hmm. It's like you, you don't know that time is passing unless you have some way to measure time. Aloneness. If we think about that for a minute, that doesn't have the sting in its tail, does it? No, because aloneness might be on purpose. Loneliness is rarely on purpose. 
well, we would say that purposeful loneliness is a kind of masochism, right? Yes. Which we all do from time to time as well. But I wonder if I say I'm lonely, I'm, I'm lonely, I'm, I'm wretched with loneliness. What do I do with it? How can I, how can I, how can I resolve it? Not sure that you can. Hmm. I think somebody different might rush in very quickly there, Bill, and say, oh, will you keep yourself busy? Sure. I mean, I think there's ways to distract yourself and there's ways to make you believe that you're not feeling it, tricking yourself. But I don't think that you can overcome that by thought alone. I'm finding it very difficult not to be attached to the ideas that are brought to me in this as well. You know, so this is an interesting thing also. I read the words here in this case and I believe I understand a teaching in this. Uh, there's a, a kind of grave error in that, possibly. Um, that I'm, I'm speaking the words, I'm listening to the words, I'm saying the words inside myself. Only the alone can commune with that which is causeless, the immeasurable. And already I attach myself to that notion that I understand that. And so I even kill that thing too by freezing it. And what that then strikes me as is somebody who is profoundly lonely because my loneliness is the representation or rather no put that a different way my loneliness is also your loneliness yet i make myself lonely by constantly seeking to gather knowledge, to know something, to need to corral these ideas or thoughts even. I, I kill them by wanting to hold on to them because by holding on to them, I fix them. Mm -hmm. And that in itself makes me lonely. Such so what is the problem. answer? Is this is, is this a, a, a Buddhist doctrine of, you know, understanding suffering and all that? You can give it its kind of labels or try and fit it into a box if you want. But I'm doing that very well by myself. Isn't it interesting, though, that most of the art and artists that you and I ever talk about or that most people have respect for are, are working alone a lot of the time? Well, I mean, there are practices that seem to come out of being alone. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I know that uh, if I'm writing, I write better when I'm absolutely alone and away, but it's private. I think this is the other thing that is very strange in terms of art and artist. Yeah, but it, you're, you're private while you're making it, but most artists want to share the things that they make. So eventually they will be public. It's almost like bringing the public into your aloneness. Yes, maybe. But I, I was I was talking to I was talking to somebody the other day about this. I, I don't I don't want to make work that goes out into the world and makes me money. Now, I'm in an enormous position of privilege to say that because I don't need the work that I do as an artist to make me money because I have another job that does that that still allows me to engage with art very deeply. Yeah. And I'm grateful. But it seems to me, and I think this is where we'll be at odds, that to make art and for it to be sold it is very, is, is again problematic that there is a lack of integrity then in what the thing is. And that thing, you know, the symbol of the thing is, is this word art. Mm -hmm. But, you know, what are we doing? It is an expression of 
you know, Ooh. this always this always reminds me of there's a there's a line in the fountainhead where he says, you know, mm -hmm. uh, I'm not an architect, so I can have clients. I have clients so that I can be an architect, basically, is the paraphrase, you know. Yeah. Um, and I was actually thinking about that the other day in the shower. And that's really true of me in the sense that, you know, there's so much stuff on the internet. You know, I'm a photographer. There's so much stuff on the internet, like how to build your photography business. But I was like, I don't want a photography business. Mm -hmm. I want to take pictures, right. you know, I want to make portraits. And if people hiring me to do that is the way that I can eat and whatever it is, then that's what I got to do. But that's not why I do it, you know? And I think that that's true for, I wonder how many people that's true for. Well, I mean, I think Anne Rand was onto something there, wasn't she? Yeah. Hmm. I mean, and also, I mean, even your situation where your art isn't a requirement for survival. Mm. There's an argument to be made that that's the, the desperation of it being part of your survival can often lead to different or arguably better art. What do you think about that argument? Well, I, I could say that it leads to a better something. It might lead to a better yeah. outcome, whether that outcome is still what I deeply consider to be art is a different But way. it does it does change the kind of work that you do or or the way you think about it. Well, yes. I mean, again, earlier, another conversation with a lovely colleague, you know, make money fast. Go and sketch some rabbits or some dogs for someone. Yeah. Fine. Okay. No, thank you. Not yeah. for not for me. It doesn't mean I'm above that. Yeah. Just means that to me that's not what art is. Yet when it comes out my mouth and I say it that way, I, I know it sounds like an elitist, pretentious shit. Yeah, you sound like all of those things. Yeah. Always, Bill. Always. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, I put um monk. I mean, all the images I've picked are actually from a, a ten year span of time. Uh, but a wider geography. So Monk, Norwegian artist, most famous, as everybody knows, for the scream. Um, like the ultimate loner, one might say, mm -hmm. uh, in his personal life. Made lots of work that could be considered a kind of um, testament to loneliness or to being solitary. Um, Night Wanderer conjures a, a really bleak sense of loneliness, I think, in that, you know, if anyone's ever been an insomniac and has ever wandered around at night, whilst it appears the rest of the world is asleep, it can be a very isolating feeling. I don't sleep well. I'm often awake at strange hours. Do you I'm, go out? Pardon? Do you ever go out? Not for a long time. I used to actually. Yeah. I used to get up and go out to the 24 hour Tesco's. What would you buy? Nothing. I just used to go and go around. Okay. Um, and in actual fact, one of the sort of longer stories I ever wrote was called The Little Insomniac. And uh, part of that story was about his overuse of 24 hour supermarket services. He just couldn't get enough of it. It was it was amazing that there were these places one could go even in the dead of night and still find other living people as yep. if, you know, everybody is either dead or asleep. And, and that feeling, I think we've probably all felt that at some point that we are, I am the only person conscious now. Now, there's something also quite attractive about that when it's not I, I love that. miserable. Sure. Yeah, I used to I used to stay up in the middle of the night and work until three o'clock in the morning, four o'clock in the morning. Yeah, I get I get the most work done then when everyone else is sort of shut down. I feel more empowered and I can't tell time is passing. So I get more of a flow state going. Mm. Um, But, you know. I don't isn't, do that isn't now. that interesting you know that sort of flow state like you i find that often at night and part of that requirement that is the requirement of being at night awake 
being in that state is aloneness. Mm -hmm. But this is bleak. I think this is anguished. Well, I mean, the sunken eye sockets and the hunched over. And again, perhaps we've all at some point in our lives experienced that moment before dawn where dawn still feels like it's so far away and that maybe in my case, sometimes I, I wait for dawn to, to sleep, not for a while actually, but certainly, uh, certainly through lockdown, my sleep patterns were very disrupted. Um, and I would wait for dawn and it was almost as if it gave me uh, some kind of relief that um, I could sleep safely whilst others were awake on my behalf. And that felt like they were protecting you? Huh? Like they were protecting you? Kind of, yeah. I think it's because I felt such a profound loneliness. Yeah. Uh, in lockdown. And, 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 you know, I lived in a house with an ex partner, a child, and a, and a brother. Yeah. But I felt utterly alone. You reached out to people all around the world. I did. <laughs> but, you know, this painting reminds me of those times. Uh, and this one, you know, this is, if you type in paintings of loneliness into Google, this will come up. <laughs> um, yeah. You know, this perhaps rather forlorn seeming lady in Ottomar, Hopper, 1927. Maybe she just got away from her husband and kids for five minutes to have a cup of tea. Maybe. I mean, this, uh, it could be pensiveness <clears throat> rather than loneliness. Yeah. Or maybe those things don't have to be separate. You know, nonetheless, she is alone. And I think the useful device there for Hopper is the expanse of black, the reflection. <laughs> you yeah. know, it's so interesting. I was about to say that that black, though, it's not black, right? No, no. It's got, it's, not. it's so interesting that there's, there's something in the blackness there. I like that a lot. Mm -hmm. It's the kind of thing you can't do photographically that is always interesting to me. But how um, sensitive of Hopper to consider that that reflection is only of the lights. Yeah. We see nothing else of others at other tables or even an interior apart from the lights. Probably because it would be a real pain in the neck to do. Well, maybe, <laughs> but also it could just be that there's a sense that in that way of painting, we, we're forced to engage with the aloneness of this character. Whether yeah, we nothing else aloneness. exists in the room, and that's kind of the point. Well, nothing else exists, and, and otherwise she's in a vacuum, you know, she's... Yeah. Who is she? Is that you in a, from a time machine? Yep. I'm sure you have a floppy hat like that upstairs somewhere. Probably. Yeah. <clears throat> I'd love to recreate this painting, actually, as a photograph. Let's do it. <laughs> yeah. Beam me over, Bill. Let's find the location. <laughs> oh, Chagall. Do you hate it? I don't like Chagall. I don't why? know why. Uh, it makes me feel like a, it's like a weird, creepy 70s kid's dream. Or like a children's <laughs> book. Yes. And I've never, I've never liked, I don't like children's books. Oh, you're such a misery gut, honestly. I seriously am. I, yeah. Well, I don't really like books, period, but <gasps> um, I know. How dare I? That's the most controversial thing you have ever said. Hot take, hot take. <laughs> um, Is this, I mean, is, is it solitude? He's there with a, Angel and a nice looking cow. Nice looking cow. I mean, the solitude that Chagall Who plays violin, is... apparently, a violin yeah. playing cow. Yeah, but the solitude here is, you know, it, you one could say that in the other two paintings, we're looking at solitude that is 
um, specific to insomnia. Yeah, and modern. Something that is about um, an internal struggle. Yeah. This is about the struggle of a collective. This is about... Hey, he's um, holding a Torah and everything. The aloneness, you know, this is a prayer shawl, cloaked in a prayer shawl. You know, this is uh, on the edge of a town. This is thinking about the past. Um, you know, the the violin, the fiddle being, I mean, Chagall painted violins, lots and the, the sim symbolic value of all these elements speak of the kind of solitude of Jews in Europe, the kind of gradual isolation of them. So this is an interesting painting, even if you don't love Chagall's work, because it symbolizes somebody who's observing very keenly the, the gradual and further marginalization of, of an entire group of people to make them alone, to isolate them in Europe in the, mm -hmm. in the 20s and the 30s. I mean, Chagall was very disturbed. He'd seen a friend assaulted in the street and it, I think it struck him. I think it, it happened in 32 or 33. And Where was he living at the time, do you know? I don't know. Go ahead. I should know that. But anyway. It's also the depths that, of the depression. You know that this, this is happening. This isolation mm -hmm. is happening. Not just to to you because of a breakdown in a in a one to one relationship, but a, a breakdown in a relationship between this group and that group to become isolated as a collective is nonetheless about a staggering loneliness. You know, how lonely do we ever feel as a collective? Are we isolated? Can we think of an example of the equivalent now? Yes. People, sure. people who belong to groups that are marginalized Oh, homeless people, mm. migrants. Yes. Still Jews in a lot of places. Yes. Um, it is interesting, though, that you're talking here in some ways about a collective loneliness. Yes. Yeah. Is there is there such a thing? Well, what do you think? Sort of. Yeah, I don't know how I feel about that. I'm thinking of blindness, Saramago, reading that, and staying with the people who have become blind and are being beaten and raped. Mm -hmm. And the sense of them and us, and the, the utter horror of that loneliness, in that blindness, where everybody was blind. Sometimes I think about uh, my niece who's blind just you know and just there are times when no one's around and she's just in blackness you know but it's like, it, in, in relative terms you know your niece's blackness that loss of vision yeah but she doesn't know any different that's the problem right right it, is that a problem? I don't know. To me, it would be a problem. To me, it would be terrifying. But Maybe it's not to her. Yeah, right. Exactly. So how many emotions or feelings or observations of other people are unable to be communicated because we're just coming at it from different experiences, you know? 
well, again, you know, you say this, you know, she doesn't know any different. Well, I might not know any different and there will be something that I maybe don't have that mm-hmm. you have. Right. Or things you have that I don't have. Right. Right. Does this make us all alone? And in fact, all lonely. Like free healthcare and, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, they always say that when it comes to longevity and depression, I mean, the answer is almost always universally other people. I have to say, I find that very lazy. Though Why? I think that must be true. We're social beings. I suppose, are we? Yes, we are. Very much so. You might not be. When you were little, did you play with your sister a lot? Uh, Yes, for a time. I, I mean, I just played by myself. Right. Explains so much. <laughs> but you know what? I I think in one way it stood me in good stead. Okay. But I also don't know if it has amplified my adult loneliness or if it has meant that my adult loneliness has been softened. The blow of it has been softened because I know it. You know how to be alone, yeah. Um, sure. No, it's not knowing I, how to be alone, though. It's knowing loneliness. And it's not knowing lo- loneliness. It is loneliness. I am loneliness. Were you lonely as a kid or were you just alone? Um, I was aware of loneliness in childhood, yeah. Okay. And again, I don't want to speak of loneliness as if it is separate to me. I, I mean, you know, loneliness is not a thing that I have. Loneliness mm-hmm. is a thing I am. And it is not a thing, it is a thing where I am separate from it. Yeah, That's very important to me when I go into this. I'm not, I'm not separate from it. Anyway. The gall. The loneliness is indivisible. There's a strength in alone all one you know all one when i'm alone i'm being yeah and we are all being all one alone it's funny this this time of year i end up spending a lot more time alone because my wife works crazy hours in the summer Mm -hmm. and it always makes me a little sad during the summer at the time when the sun's out until 8 30 and i should be I don't know. It's interesting. Can I, can I just observe that for a moment with you? <laughs> when you should be. It's the should be that makes you alone. Not the actuality of it. Yeah, but then winter comes around and the sun goes down at four o'clock and I think to myself, why weren't you doing something when it was still light out at 8 p.m.? Why did you waste that time of your life? You only get X years in the world and you spent some of them being sad and alone when you didn't have to be well you've just said it yourself it's because you're thinking about should be yeah maybe mm. well Woodman. send your robertson <laughs> all one mm-hmm. Wait, how does that explain you and me though are we one or two Speaking of seeing as one. Well, you and I can speak of seeing. And we can believe ourselves to be speaking of seeing from two points. 
but that's just our ego talking. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Bill. Thank you.